Yeah, you guys have a seat. And yes, you saw me carrying glasses out here. It has finally happened. How many of you remember your first time? Man, it's like, it just doesn't feel good. Like, when I was, we were, we were away and um, I, cut my, I cut my cell phone off so I couldn't, you can't blow the font up on your Bible. I mean, you know, like, it just doesn't matter what you do. Once they go, it's, so I was like, okay, we got it, we got it. All right, I'm in. I'm, 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 I'm sold out. So I went to some little store and were these 1.5s? 2.5s. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You could have just lied to me. You could have just said it's 1.5. Uh, Turn to your Bibles in Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to talk about the, um, like I said, the only fight that we're asked to fight. Um, And we're going to look at uh, who or what the enemy is, even though sometimes we we make up our own. We put certain people, our things in in the place of, okay, so this this is this is now my fight. This is now my my thing. This is what I've got to I've got to come against. And when you're fighting the wrong thing, you stay frustrated. Like that's, that's, that's just, to me, that's the problem. And, and as, I, as I get a little bit older, it, it's becoming a lot more apparent that if I know, if like if I roll in my role and I do what's asked of me and I let God do what he said he would do, I, I can stay in this place of perfect peace. Like I can, I, I can be okay. The problem is, is we, we really don't think we can be okay. Why do we believe that? Because we, we, label, we label and identify an enemy that's not our enemy or a fight that's not our fight. So we're just, we're just what I'm going to do really tonight is um, <clears throat> let the word kind of speak for itself. So we're going we're to read a bunch of Bible verses. I say a bunch, like six. Well, sections. <laughs> right, we're going to read a lot of word tonight because here, here's something cool about that. If I do that, then the responsibility is on Holy Spirit and God, not me. Like that's, um, that's what I always try to do from this platform is just give you what the word says and try to keep my opinions out of it because I mean, no, our opinions sometimes suck. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like, so if you, if I, if I say something, you go, I just don't know about that. I guess it's Jesus at heaven.com. I don't really know how you get in touch with him, like, but you're just going to have to deal with him because it's going to be in the word. I'm not, I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm just going to tell you, like, this, this is what's up. So what, what, who, things are we su- supposed to fight or what are we not supposed to fight? So you know this. Here we go. Man. <laughs> I have... I have crossed over, <laughs> but at least I can see. I was blind. and <laughs> uh, Verse 10, finally, everybody say finally. finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our fight is not. Everybody follow me so far? Are you sure? Okay. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. So does everybody understand what our fight is not? What is our fight not? Everybody say it together because it's not your mother-in-law. <laughs> right? D- doesn't say in there, my battle is against that crazy woman that gave birth to the woman I love more than anything, but she needs to go away. The ones that are laughing, I hope she's not with you right now. So, so it's, okay, is, is your battle your wife? Is your battle your husband? Is your battle your boss? Is your battle cancer? Is your battle the miscarriage? Is your battle the addiction? You do not battle against the stuff you see. 
But what do we do? You put, you put something in this chair that you can see, and you wind up fighting the wrong fight. That's why you're losing. That's like, that's, to me, that's devil's number one scheme. It says, like, be aware of the devil's schemes. What is it? He wants you to fight the wrong thing, because if you're fighting the wrong thing, you're going to lose. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get sucked in. <laughs> Verse 13. So because of that, we don't battle against flesh and blood. Therefore, take up the full armor of God. Why? So that you'll be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm, stand firm. Therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, in addition to all. Now, when you see that right there, in addition to all, what you need to know is what he's about to say is the most important thing that makes up the armor. That without this thing, there is no armor. So, in addition to all, taking up the shield of what? Faith. Everybody say it really loud. What? with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now everybody turn to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Paul writing to Timothy says this. So I want you to, I want you to understand we do not battle against flesh and blood. You don't battle against the stuff that you see. So therefore, take up the full armor of God. He tells us to put all this stuff on. And he says at the end of it, take up the shield of faith. Okay, so the most important thing to make up all of that, okay, is faith. The Bible actually says it's impossible to please God without faith. So faith is super, 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 super important, which is why it says in 12, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Now, 2 Timothy 4, 7. So we're, we're three in. So it means we only have three more after this one. 1 Timothy 4, 7. Paul writing, last words of his life right here. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness with the, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day and not only to me but also to all who, have, who has loved his appearing. Now go to Jude. That's a strange one. How many go there all the time? If you go too fast to Revelations, you'll pass it because it's like one page. Jude, chapter 1, verse 3. Thank you, baby. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing. Now, look, look he says, I, like, I really wanted to write to you about the com commonality of salvation. I just want to talk to you about being saved. But... As, as, he, as Jude started to write this letter, he was like, however, here's what I thought I'd do. I want to appeal to you to contend earnestly for what? Right. What? Right. Which was once for all handed down to the saints. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Which everybody knows this whole thing. But I want you to like... Why do I keep taking these off? Because if you're over there, you're blurry. But if you're right here, I can totally see you. Okay. <laughs> Such a journey in life, these little things. <laughs> I thought I'd feel smarter, but I really don't. It's like, okay, so, but I'm keeping the fight of faith. Believe that. Okay, so, so we're, we're taking a little journey. We're a few, few in, and you're already, I hope, I really hope you're already beginning to be able to answer the question. What's, what's the one fight we're supposed to fight? Everybody say it. The fight of faith. We're ne you're never, ever, ever fighting cancer. 
You're never, ever, ever fighting your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother, your sister, your spouse, an addiction, a miscarriage. You're never fighting anything tangible that whatever it is you want to put in this chair, you can put it in there, but what you're going to do is you're going to get sucked into fighting the wrong thing. And you're want, here's what everybody wonders. Why is this journey so frustrating? How many of you would just be honest and say sometimes the Christian journey is just doggone frustrating? Like, how many, of you, how many of you have walked with Jesus long enough that stuff doesn't work out like you want it to? I mean, don't leave me hanging. Like, there's some of y'all half raising. Y'all like, <laughs> like, you think that makes you less spiritual. Have you prayed for something that didn't happen? Well, you wanted something didn't get it. Well, you, how many are glad you didn't? Have you prayed for something you wanted but didn't get it? And five years later, it's like, whoo. Thank you, Lord, for not giving me her. <laughs> right? It's, that's usually when it always is. It's like some, some person who's like, God, I'll serve you the rest of my life. You just give me her. Or you just give me him. That is the best thing ever. And you didn't get him, and five years later, you saw why. Right? Everybody say faith. It's, be, it's believing. What is it? It's believing that God knows better than you. It's believing that what God says is true. It's believing that God is good no matter what we see. That's what you fight. Because what are the fiery darts of the devil? God doesn't love you. God doesn't hear your prayer. God doesn't care. God's uninvolved. God could heal, but he's not going to because you did X, Y, Z. Like, how many of you have ever heard any of those statements hit your mind? And, and we read that verse of Scripture. Most everybody in here probably knows that first part. We don't battle against flesh and blood, but we forget. Yeah, but you've got the most important part of that armor is taking up the shield of faith to stop all the darts that want to get you messed up so that I can get you to fight the wrong fight. Because if I can get you to fight the wrong fight, you're going to lose every time. And you're going to end up jealous, you're going to end up envious, you're going to end up angry, you're going to end up um, discontent, you're going, to, you're going to end up in a lot of jacked up places. How many of you ever been in a jacked up place? I'm not talking about physically, but just jacked up, all messed up in here, all confused, all not sure, mad. Don't even know. How many of you ever been mad? Don't know why you're mad. <laughs> just, I'm talking about, y'all know the word, y'all say it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some of y'all puckered up. She's just so excited that he's back from vacation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Hebrews 11, uh, starting in verse 32. Well, actually, I'll paraphrase some other ones, but we'll start reading in verse 32. Because there's a whole list. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old gained approval. And it goes through this whole list, and y'all probably read it, and, and like it's, it's kind of cliche, but, um, and for some people in here, I may be telling you some things that you already know or reminding you some things, but I just want to just really quick, like, by faith, Enoch was taken up. Without faith, it's impossible to please God um, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith even Sarah. I like that it says even Sarah, like hers was worse. <laughs> you just, by faith, this one, by faith, and by faith even Sarah had a kid when she was like 127 or whatever. Okay, so like all the, here's verse 13, we blow by this one. All these died in faith without receiving the promises. But having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance. Verse 17, by faith Abraham, by faith Isaac, by faith Jacob, by faith Joseph, by faith Moses, by faith the walls of Jericho fell, by faith Rahab did what she did. And then we get to verse 32 and it says, and what more shall I say? 
For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back dead by resurrection and others were tortured, not accepting their release so that they might obtain a better resurrection and others experience mockings and scourging. Yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated. Men of whom the world is not worthy wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground, and all these having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God provided something better for us so that apart from us, apart from us they would be made perfect. I find it interesting that when anybody preaches this section or talks about this section, we kind of land on the by faith of Joseph and Moses and Abraham and even Sarah. And we'll get down to about halfway through verse 35, especially that part where women receive back their dead by resurrection. And most guys stop right there on that semicolon. If you have your Bible, I don't know if you can see it, but there's women receive back their dead by resurrection semicolon. Because it's about to make a crossover into what some other people did inside of their faith. And it gives you this whole list of like, there were like legit people who were tortured and sawn in two and ran around in caves and hid because people were after them, and, but they would not bend the knee to Rome. They would not bend the knee and denounce their faith. They would not bend the knee and give up their Jesus. They would not do what they were asked to do because by faith they lived, but yet they never saw the visions of the promise that they were given in the future. Their fight wasn't against the sword. Their fight wasn't against the saw. Their their fight wasn't against the scourging. Their fight wasn't against the caves. Their fight wasn't against the fact that they were hiding. What was their fight? Believing and having hope against all hope. That no matter what I see, no matter what's going on in front of me, God's good. God does heal. Will he? Yes, he will. God does deliver. God saves. You ever prayed for somebody to get saved and you went, they ain't probably getting it. No, really. Like, how many, how many got somebody praying for, for, you need somebody to get saved right now. Raise your hand. If you're praying for your friend's salvation, raise your hand. And they're like not coming to church. Right? Because let's just be, let's just be legit serious for just a second. Because we can... Here's, here's like your pastor's super, super passion. Um, I'm, I'm not like a one-on-one evangelist. Like, how many, how many know there are some people that will tell, tell a fence post about Jesus? If they're in Walmart, everybody in aisle 11 is hearing about the Lord on the way down to the milk. Okay, so that's, that's actually what you need to understand. And, and that, this is where uh, the church gets it wrong because they, they say everybody should be that. Actually, the Bible says all of us are witnesses. We're to live our life in such a way that it's attractive that people want to find out what changed us. But not everybody's going to be an evangelist, especially like that. So, like, if that's not your deal and you ever went to somewhere and they gave you, like, an evangel cube or a stack of tracks and they sent you out, like, to go door to door and you got diarrhea on the way and you pit it out and you're like, I don't I don't even know what I'm going to say. Well, just know that's probably because you don't have that spiritual gift, but you could probably stay in the car and pray it down. How many know what I'm talking about? So, so what I'm saying is, is, is I am a, what you call a platform, but I, w- I would rather preach the gospel every single week than anything else. I would rather tell people every single week about Jesus and do an altar call and watch hundreds get saved and baptism numbers out the roof. The problem is Jesus didn't say go do that. He said go and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, t- and by the way, while you're at it, teach them everything I taught you. 
And so, like, that's the Great Commission. It's not save a bunch of people. But, like, my deal is, is, like, I just wish y'all invite the, the worst heathen you know. And some of y'all, that, well, that'd be me. But, I mean, like, some of you, I'm talking about the one, ten of them. I can't bribe them to get in here so I can just preach Jesus to them. I, there is nothing I love better than watching a spiritual resurrection happen because I don't think we give it enough weight. Do I like to see somebody healed of something that's killing him? Absolutely. But, like, what you got to understand is once you're saved, you're already healed of all that stuff. And here's what everybody says. Yeah, but what about, because there's two people watching, but what about what I'm seeing right now, right here? Your fight is not cancer. Your fight is not the miscarriage you just had. The fight, your fight is not the addiction that your loved one is fighting. The fight is not even you trying to get this lost person to church. The fight is that you would believe God, not just believe in God. That you'd not go, God's cool. He's out there somewhere. But you would actually go, God, doggone it. God said it. Therefore, it's true. I am, the Bible says, it's fully convinced that's to the point that people would look at your life and say, you are crazy. You're in denial. You don't even pay attention to reality. Well, that's because the Bible says not to focus on what I see. Because my battle's not you. My battle's not this thing that you just wrote down and said that I have. As a matter of fact, I don't have it. Now, I'm telling you if, you, if you go to the doctor's office and they tell you you have this and you go, you can keep your paper, I don't have that. They all think you're crazy. 100%. But what's the truth? Some of you struggle right now. Well, the truth is I have it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The truth is you don't have it. 100% the truth is you do not have it because you have a body waiting on you that's perfect. You have a home waiting on you that's perfect. It's called heaven. You're already there, but not yet. Faith is, I refuse to believe that I have that. Even though what I see is screaming at me that I got it, I don't have it. And no matter what, I will not quit believing. I will not curse God. I will not get mad. I will not step out. I will not stop coming to church. I will not quit praising. I will not because I'm fully convinced. Now, what you need to understand is everybody's going to tell you you're crazy. Dang it. <laughs> and verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, so out of everything I just read, by faith, all these people, and like there's not enough room to talk about Gideon, Samson, blah, 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 and by faith, all these people were like cut in half and blah, blah, blah. Therefore, since we, everybody say me, this statement is for us. This, this is where the Bible goes. This is for you. Therefore, since we, everybody say me, have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside Every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and now is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and then we'll be done. Just, re just really quick, this is just for somebody who thinks you want to grow your hair out. It's really hot. Um, it's not a good August thing to do. I know we're not in August, but I'm already there because it's 100 degrees outside. 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, starting in verse 7. What's our fight? The only fight we're supposed to fight is the fight of faith. Okay? But we, everybody say me, have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. Don't you read that again? Like, like when something goes wrong in your life 
and is not going like you want it to go, there is a treasure in you. What is that treasure? Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the living God is in you, not to bring glory to you. Like, we, we all got this. Like, not, not to make me look good, but that no matter what I go through, because I know my, I know my enemy, and it's not what, who I put in this chair, it's not what I put in this chair, it's, to, it's the enemy to get me to quit believing. And as long as I fight that fight, I'm going to be okay. Why, why? Why, am I, why am I supposed to fight that fight? So that the glory of the power that comes from me will be for God and not for me. So, so I'm, I'll go on. Are you, is everybody tracking with me so far? All right, so just so you know, you live in this world. You're going to have troubles. You will get sick. Things will happen. So verse 8 says this. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also be, may, may be manifest in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake. So that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. What is the writer saying? It's like, listen, we're constantly in this world going through suffering. Why? So that the world is totally confused by the fact that you can smile and you have cancer. And you can smile while you're going through a divorce. And you can smile when you get the news that you got cheated on. And you can smile when you get the news that you lost the baby. That you can smile and have joy no matter what's going on in my life because I know God's got me. I mean, why else would he write, count it all joy, friends? When you go through a butt ton of crap, because you know, we just read several scriptures ago, how did Jesus endure the cross? It wasn't because he was more awesomer than you, it was because he had a focus difference than you. He had a perspective that we don't have. He did it because he knew what would happen. For the joy set where? <laughs> Have you ever went running? Like a long way. Like a whole mile. <laughs> right? Like, how many know long is relative? <laughs> like some of you, it's like, if I was to run to the front door, that's like, that's a long. That's, that's like eight steps uh, and a run. Right? <laughs> right? So, but do you know what you can do as a human being? Psychologists will tell you this. Do you know what you can do if you know where the end is? You can endure anything. What if you don't know where the end is? Here's what I'm saying. What if, what if, I, what if I came to your house at 5 a.m. in the morning and said, we're going to run? What's your first question? It's just right. <laughs> well, now wait a minute. How far? How long? How fast? Like, what, you know, there's a series of information we need to know. And what, what audacity did God have to tell Abraham? What did he ask? Hey, what, like, where are we going? Well, I just, like, need you to leave. But where are we going? You know, just... Just start walking. Now, how many of y'all would have done that? Now, don't be super spiritual and raise your dang hand like you. I love, I, let's go. <laughs> you, are, you all have some serious questions, wouldn't you? You'd be like, well, what kind of shoes am I wearing? How far is it? How long is it going to take? Where am I going? I don't even know if I want to go there. What's the journey look like? So there's people logged in right now that's on a journey that they don't know what the next 30 minutes look like. They don't know what tomorrow looks like. And the truth is, if you'll just have a moment of perspective change, you don't know what tomorrow looks like. You think you do. This is why James says, why do you worry about tomorrow? You have no idea what it's bringing. The greatest gift you can give yourself is to be in this moment right now. Because what's going to happen to you on the drive home? I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer. I'm just trying to bring us to 
a revelation of the fight is not the red light. The fight is not the fact that people run every red light in Decatur, Alabama. <laughs> and I have no idea why. If you live here, stop, stop at your little green light and look. There's some police officers in here going, right? Listen, listen. We fight the wrong things, therefore we lose all the time. You're losing in your flipping marriage because you think she's the problem. Because you think he's the problem. Because you think your kids are the problem. And here's what you're going to tell me. Come to my house. Just spend 30 minutes with my heathens. And you will agree. They are the problem. But you gave birth to them. You raised them. They're repeating what? What they, not what they, some of them are repeating what they hear. And you ask your wife, where did he learn that word? <laughs> and she goes, so what am I trying to tell you? Listen, your kids are not your issue. Your boss is not your issue. It's believing that God is true. And if what he says is true, would it not make sense to live it? The man can go ahead and come because I'm, I'm finishing up. Verse 13, but having the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak, knowing that he who raised Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, so that the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. Therefore... We do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. This, this, I love this statement. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What am I trying to get you to understand? You, you, you put something in this chair. Everybody in this room has put something in this chair at some point in their life. Kirk, will you pull that stuff? I'm, I'm, I don't need those glasses no more. I'm done. Thank you, man. And what we don't understand is you're a son or daughter of the king and you sit in a throne. And you're like, well, how do you, how do you say that? Because the Bible literally says you're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. What is Christ sitting on right now? The right hand of God. It is a throne. And you know what's under Jesus' feet as he sits at the right hand of God? I'll give you the answer since you're all like trying to figure it out. Everything. Everything is under his feet. And if you're seated with him, what's under your feet? Everything. You need to learn to put the right things under your standing. You don't have to understand it. You have to put it under your standing so that you stand on the right things and fight the right things. But as long as you're fighting the wrong thing, you're going to lose some of you sat in this chair all the time and you have put in that chair, honest to goodness, you have put in that chair your spouse and you're fighting it and you're arguing with them and you're blaming them and you're condemning them and you're doing all of these things and, and every now and then you throw some scripture to manipulate them. Right? Don't raise your hand. Sometimes you put your kids over there, my, my kids are my problem. I told her not to have four. We should have just had one. It would have been all right. But she pulled the whole, you just pray about a card. Like, there's some dudes in here getting set free right now. I don't know why they're running off acting like that. I don't know. Like, it's, it's them, 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 them. And then sometimes you put cancer in there and you feel like, okay, cancer is my fight right now, so I have to do all of this stuff. And, and why did God, sometimes you're in that chair. Sometimes he put you in there. Why did God 
allow me to be born in this family. Why am I born this way? Or maybe, maybe you're in a wheelchair, or maybe you can't do the things that you want to do, so you're in that chair. You know who else you put in that chair? You put God in that chair. And you think God's your enemy. And you're having this conversation over and over and over again with the wrong thing. And it's why you're not winning because you're fighting the wrong fight. And all I want to do is I, is I land back in the country and preach the first message of this house is I want to, like, I want to strengthen the right thing for you. I want to teach you what Jesus so taught on all the time. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What you see me do is what he does. So I am, so you are. As a matter of fact, you'll even do greater things than I've done. Is that not hard to believe? But yet, that's the call. That's the invitation. It's impossible to believe God, believe God without faith. What's he asking me to do? If I said it, don't believe just like in me. Even the devil and his demons believe and shudder. But believe me. Here's what happens. Here's the first thing. But God. Yeah, I know. But God. Isn't it cool how one phrase can mean two different things depending on how you say it? Because some people, you're doing this. But God. What about but God? But God, I wouldn't have peace. But God, I wouldn't have joy. But God, I wouldn't, I'd be pressed on all sides and crushed, but thank God I am pressed on all sides and I am not crushed. But God, I would feel totally alone, but because he has promised he is with me, he will never forsake me, he will not leave me, he is with me always. As a matter of fact, he is very close and present in a help of time of need because he's in me. Here's who you're allowed to put in that chair, the devil. We started in Ephesians chapter 6. We do not fight against everybody, but against rulers and powers of this dark world. And like it names all the levels of demonic forces. Do you know that's what it's doing? It's, it's naming out all the levels of demonic forces that want to come, steal, kill, and destroy your life. Do you know how they do that? They get you to believe that God's not true. Do you know it hasn't changed? That's what he told Eve. Oh, man. God totally don't want you to eat of that because he knows you'll be like him. That's bullcrap. They were already like him. If I'm passionate, it's because I want your life to change. The only way your life is going to change is you fight the right fight. The fight of faith. So no matter what's going on in your life, if you're logged in and your wife is suffering with cancer, I have unbelievable compassion because I don't know exactly what that's like, but my heart breaks for you. This, this family's heart breaks for you, but your fight's not cancer. It's faith. Because you know what wants to come and rob faith? Fear. God might not come through. God might not hear me. It ain't even got to be a God won't. It just, it, all the devil got to get you to do is it got, God might not. When all through scripture, it says what? God will. Problem is, it don't always look like we want it to look like. Now you realize all that faith chapter I read you, it, it literally says, and all those died in faith without seeing what they were promised. What does that mean? That Abraham, Moses, all those guys they knew who was in that chair and it wasn't God and it wasn't them and it wasn't their issues, the problems that they could see. It was that they chose to believe God. You realize Abraham got a bunch of kids he ain't seen? You ever thought about that? Still not seeing them. But he believed God. So what do you want? What do you, here's, here's the exercise I want you to do. I want some of you to go home, put a chair in the middle of your we're actually going to do it now, but you, some of you need to personally do this, and you need to let the devil have it. Now, y'all can think I'm crazy. 
that's cool. I have done this. This actually works. And you don't, everybody thinks for some reason in the church world, the louder I pray, the stronger my prayer. You don't ever, ever notice people get juiced up when they start praying and start screaming and grunting and ranting and raving? Can I just encourage you, be careful when you do that? Because if you ever lose control, he still got you. You don't have to scream at the devil. You don't have to necessarily always shout. But I do encourage you, put the chair there. Say, hey, um, devil, what you're going to do is I invite you to take a seat for the show. I want you to sit down. I want you to enjoy the show that I... going to worship my God regardless. That no matter what, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop believing. There's nothing you can do in this world to cause me to stop believing in the unseen. Because I do know my God has a whole world in his hands. And if this thing doesn't play out like I hope it does. That's okay because my God knows best. My God loves me. My God is for me. And if he's for me, then you can't be against me. And I don't fear you because you can't touch my soul or my spirit. I'm saved, born again, sealed to the day of redemption. So you sit over there. And you watch as I worship my King. I will not bend my knee to a false king. Do you realize that's what Jesus did when he was tempted? When Jesus was in the desert for 40 days, he made the enemy sit there as he believed God. And he did everything that he could to get him not 